hey guys welcome or welcome back to my channel today's video is actually the first video of a brand new series on my channel called the law student diaries and it's exactly what it sounds like i'll be documenting my experience as a uct law student occasionally i'll try to you know extend beyond uct because i want other students from other universities to also benefit from the videos but for the most part i will be dwelling on uct because that's my area of expertise if you will and i'm apologizing for the noise disruptions you might hear in advance i do live in an apartment complex and everyone's always doing random stuff and just being annoying so if you hear coughs sneezes a water pipe all that stuff i'm sorry okay i'm trying my best also i definitely just pulled up to this video no makeup no cuteness in sight it just vibes so just bear with how my face is looking like right now so the University of Cape Town, arguably, has one of, if not the best, law schools in South Africa. Consequently, it's very, very hard to get into a UCT law school. My intention for this video is to help you make sense of things and hopefully make the process a little bit easier. As usual, I've created this video in various chapters, so you can go ahead and skip to whichever chapter appeals more to you. But as usual, my, you know, usual advice is that I would just watch the whole video if I were you, just so you don't take anything out of context and I'd also just watch all the ads. So there are three different law degree routes that UCT offers. The first is a straight LLB, the second is BA Law and the third is BCom Law. But regardless of whichever route you go for, all law students at UCT complete the same curriculum. The BA Law and the BCom Law are combined degrees, so you have to go through the Faculty of Humanities for the BA or the Faculty of Commerce for the BCom and complete their respective degrees and then you go into your LLB for two years. The straight LLB on the other hand is a four-year degree unless you're a graduate either from UCT or another institution then it's a three-year degree and that's what I'm doing because last year 2020 I graduated from UCT with a Bachelor of Social Science. <laughs> I almost said something else. I graduated from UCT with a Bachelor of Social Science in Philosophy and that's why I'm doing the graduate LLB stream which is three years like I said <laughs> so in terms of my personal pros and cons I feel like it may be rewarding to go for the BA law or BCom law because you'll end up with two degrees in five years but but that workload is not cute because you have to do or rather you have to balance the workload of both degrees at the same time which I don't know why you'd want that stress in your life that's why I opted to go for the graduate LLB stream because I was able to finish my Bachelor of Social Science and Philosophy and do all my courses for that degree on their own and then focus on law separately. Law is a lot of work, so I can't imagine having two degrees to balance at once, though a lot of my friends are doing the combined stream and they're managing, so it's not impossible, but I'm just saying... What's one extra year for my mental health, you know what I mean? If you haven't realized already, the difference between doing the graduate LLB stream and the combined stream is a year. Because for the combined stream, you're doing everything in five years. Whereas for the graduate LLB, you're doing one degree for three years and the LLB for three years. So that's six years. The difference is a year and one could argue that a year is a long time. But I'd rather that. I'd rather be at school for one extra year then have to balance two degrees at once because one thing about commerce and one thing about humanities it's hard there it's really really hard and on top of that law is just really really hard so everything's just messed up quick story time i did get accepted to do the ba law stream in second year because you apply for it in first year that we pick up the law subjects in second year whatever i did get accepted to do that but then i realized that i was actually gonna die because of the workload philosophy was very 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 demanding intellectually physically mentally spiritually it just took a lot out of me so that's why i ended up declining that offer and opting to do the graduate llb stream if you haven't seen the video where i explain my journey at uct and why i ended up um, doing what i did then i'll link the video up above you can check it out and yeah So now let's get into the admission requirements, which are definitely the most stressful part of this all. There are three terms you guys should familiarize yourselves with. And the first is FPS, faculty point score. The second is WPS, weighted point score. And the third is NBTs, 
the devil. Okay, so let's start with the FPS, the faculty point score. It's basically adding up every single mark for each subject, excluding LO. So that's it on the FPS. Now let's talk about the WPS. The WPS, weighted point score, just refers to social and economic disadvantage. So if you are historically disadvantaged, you have a higher chance of being admitted. On your application, they'll ask you a couple of questions. And if you do have a high WPS, you have a higher chance of being admitted. Let me just grab my iPad for this because I do not have this memorized, child. Okay. So for all essay applicants for guaranteed admission, you need an FPS, faculty point score of 530 and above. For all essay applicants for probable admission, you need a WPS, weighted point score of 510 or above. For essay applicants in the rigorous categories, for possible admission, you need an FPS of 460 or above. And for international applicants that have um, written their matric with NSC, for probable admission, the FPS is 530 or above. So just to give you guys a theoretical example, you need to clean have over 70% for each course you're doing in high school, which is a lot. So when I say that it's very intense to get into a law school in general, this is exactly what I mean. So now let's talk about NBTs, which are national benchmark tests. And all I can say is fire. Fire flame emoji times a million. NBTs are so hot. But also, it's my subjective opinion that they're hard. I found them very hard. For some people, they just breeze through NBTs. So maybe I'm the problem. <laughs> so it is absolutely compulsory for you to do your NBTs when applying at UCT. <laughs> The devil. The devil himself. Anyways, there are two types of MBTs. There's an AQL one, which is a bit of math, a bit of English. And then there's a straight math one. For the law faculty, I don't think you have to do the straight math one. They just require the AQL one, which is a bit of math, a bit of English. In my year, at least, I didn't have to do the straight math one. They will let you know if you have to do both but I'm just saying that Maya did not have to do both just had to do the AQL so for the NBTs there is an NBT website which has everything you need to know I'm not here to give you all those different rules I'm just here to give you the synopsis which is that NBTs suck hopefully I'm not scaring you I hope I'm not scaring you because some people do actually find NBTs and not that difficult for me the AQL NBT the English side was really good I'm naturally good at English so that's good for my soul and for my dignity but the math side of my EQL completely just sucked it sucked and it's actually the reason why i didn't get into the straight llb which was my first option that's why i ended up opting for doing the um graduate llb that wasn't my plan back then it just happened this way but yeah that's how i didn't get into the straight llb for your NBTs, you have to get an extremely, extremely good mark to be considered for the law faculty. So for 2020, I know the ACT did scrap needing to do NBTs as a prerequisite for acceptance because of coronavirus. Obviously, it was locked down. Everyone is at home. There's no absolute way you could have gone to write your NBTs. So that's very, very nice for the class of 2020 because if you can avoid doing NBTs, why not? They're such a pain in the behind. Oh my gosh. So for 2022, which is why I'm assuming you're watching this video, I'm not sure if they'll scrap that requirement again, but it seems like everything is kind of getting back to normalcy little by little, so they might not scrap the MBTs. I'm just here to warn you, you made your MBTs as part of your accept your application ECT. You may not just be ready for anything, okay? be ready for anything and actually i saw that now people are offering nbt classes and whatnot so if you think that nbts are nothing you can handle because there are like a few nbt questions you can practice online if you know that's going to be hard for you go ahead and go to those classes in my year there was none of that there was absolutely none of that no actually i think yes actually people were going to classes but it was still on the on the on the down low now people are more vocal about going to NBT classes, which kind of defeats the purpose of the test because it's basically testing your ability without practice and going to a class means you're practicing, but it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. Whatever. If you need to go to those classes, do it. Obviously you want the best mark possible for your NBTs because yeah, that's how you get accepted along with obviously your WPS and your FPS. So 
BA and BCom law, you have to apply to those respective faculties. So in other words, you have to apply to humanities or commerce. And then in first year is when you apply for law to pick up your law courses in second year. There are certain requirements for you to be eligible to even apply for law. And for BCom, you have to get an aggregate of 63 with no failed courses in first year. And for BA, so humanities, you have to get an aggregate of 65 with no failed courses. I know that it seems like it's huge and it actually is a lot of work to get higher than 65 but it's possible i'm here to tell you that it's possible i myself got 71 in first year so trust me you just need to work hard work consistently and believe in yourself promise you you will make it and try not to feel anything if you do feel something it happens and but try not to feel anything try not to feel anything because they're all fucked up you're trying to get into law for the rest of your undergrad because even for the graduate LLB stream which is finishing your you know initial degree and then blah 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 you can't have failed the course and you need 65 so that 65 percent requirement never falls away for BCom at 63 two percent makes a difference but yeah that um requirement never falls away and you can't have failed any courses so yeah when i say don't fail a course i mean it like try your absolute best okay okay as an end note for this chapter the applications 1422 do open on the 1st of may though ucc does reserve the right to change the dates if they want to so keep your eyes peeled on that website but they should open on the 1st of may or sometime in may let's talk about the benefits of going to UCT law school. I'm gonna just read these from the handbook because there's no way I would have these memorized. There's like 12 points so you can go ahead and read the rest of them in your own time but just to summarize because that's what this video is for, just give you a synopsis, a quick and concise summary of everything. Uh, UCC law graduates are highly sought after. Uh, UCC LLB students graduate with the full set of skills required in legal practice. The UCC law faculty is rated among the top 100 law schools in the world. Um, that's for 2016, 2017, 2018 and 19. I'm not sure about 2020 and obviously we're in 2021. Hopefully you can rep, you know. The UCC law library has a vast array of different books, it has a very, 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 very wide library which if you're really, really, really into law with your heart and soul, that's going to be really, really amazing. And lastly, UCT does offer different uh, routes to get your LLB degree, as we've already discussed in this video, which is great for you because you can just pick whichever route kind of resonates with you more, whichever route you think you thrive in best. I personally don't regret going in for the graduate LLB stream. Because I'm already a graduate, I kind of already have the critical skills to tackle my LLB. Um, I already told you guys why I wouldn't recommend the combined stream. I'm not saying don't do it, go do it by all means. I am here being your number one fan. If you do do a combined stream, I'm just saying that it's very hard to balance both. And in terms of the straight LLB from high school, I feel like it's a little bit difficult for high school students to thrive as much as they would in their first semester just because it's completely different it's a completely different ball game completely different workload from high school it is definitely possible there are hundreds of thousands of people who have done the straight LLB from high school and have done well i'm not saying that you won't do well i'm just saying that it is difficult to adapt so that's why i'm really happy that i have an undergrad degree i know how uni works despite it being a very hard philosophy it was not a joke I feel prepared for this degree but yeah whichever route you do go for just know that I support you I stand you I'm just here to give you know my two cents which I hope helps so now let's talk about what to expect <laughs> it's only my second week of my LLB and I really feel like it's so hot like it's like it's hot hot and i'm not sure it's making it difficult maybe it's online school and how strenuous it is already now you can't even have your lectures face to face i'm not sure it's making it so difficult but it is difficult i'm not saying you won't be able to do it it's highly possible in fact we will make it if you're wanting to do law you will make it if you're doing the right now and you're watching this for the vibes you will make it we'll all make it but i'm just saying it's very difficult so expect a very intense workload like that is guaranteed expect to have to kind of split your attention in a million different directions you have 
six courses, that's a lot of courses. In my undergrad, I never had more than five courses at one time. So this is like completely different and I'm getting used to it bit by bit, but it's just a lot. So the workload is very intense, a lot of reading, a lot of writing, a lot of resources you have to go through. But if you love reading and writing, then you'll be fine. <laughs> if you don't, start liking it now. <laughs> so for the matrix that are wanting to head into a straight LLB, you will have to do a math course and it's not a difficult math course. I'm just mentioning this just in case you are someone who is like me and hates math. You will have to do a math course, but it's not difficult. It's not um, complex math, so you will be fine. I'm just giving you a heads up. If you are heading into the graduate LLB stream, don't worry about a sweetheart. You don't have to do math because they assume that you've really touched on certain concepts in your undergrad, which is great for us because we don't have to do math. But yeah, if you are coming in from high school, you probably, I'm not saying you definitely will have to, but you probably will have to do um, an intro math course. But the good news is it doesn't seem that difficult. Good luck, most weary. <laughs> good luck, honestly. I actually mean that though. Good luck. I'm really glad I, you know, slice it. Yeah, point of me mentioning this is because I don't want you guys to assume that you're not going to do maths just because it's law and law is associated with reading and writing. You probably at some point will have to do math just like at some point later on in the degree i'll probably have to do some calculations or whatnot math kind of is the foundation for everything so it's not like you can't avoid it forever but i'm just saying that yeah don't come here thinking that you won't do maths at all maths will pop its head in here and there so yeah anyways that's it from me thank you so much for tuning into my video i hope you found it helpful in one way or another also uct needs to pay me my coins because i'm actually doing their promo for free Free. But anyways, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I really mean that. I love reading guys' comments. They really do make my day. I love reading the feedback, everything, just everything into my veins. Insert it into my veins. Also, commenting does help push my video further up the algorithm so more people will see it. So yeah, um, let's help each other out. Let's share with friends who might need to watch this or who might need to see this do all that also we're almost on 4k which is absolutely crazy thank you so much for supporting me and just rocking with me i genuinely it means the world to me yeah i'll see you in my next video bye